Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for October 10th, 2023. Well, I'm sure if you live in the Western world, the focus of the last couple of days in the media has been on the ongoing war that's developing in Gaza between Israel and Hamas. Uh, this is the dominant theme of, of media coverage uh, and it, it is important. There's an upward cycle of violence, a danger of a, a spread to a war which could engulf the whole region. And it comes at a moment where there's the continuation of the, the NATO proxy war in Ukraine, warnings and threats about going to war with China and so on. So I don't want to minimize the fact that there's a lot of coverage of this. But the problem is the coverage treats it like a football game that you choose your side and you don't look at the valid complaints or, or arguments coming from the other side, which means there's no diplomatic solution in the way it's being covered. And what's making it worse is that the Western powers, the United States and uh, the European Union allies, are responding to this by saying, we'll send more weapons, we'll spend more money. In other words, continue the war instead of insisting that there be negotiations and a, a ceasefire, and then starting to address the real problems, because there are real problems. There is a legitimate question of security for the people of Israel, but there's also the fact that the Palestinians have been subjected to an inhuman kind of misery, like a Warsaw Ghetto type situation uh, for many, many years. And the pent up anger is what we see in the attacks from Hamas, and the response from Israel is essentially to say, as, as Netanyahu said, there'll be vengeance. Well, vengeance means more fighting. And what we discussed yesterday with Helga Zeplarouche is that this is where you see this question of the coincidence of opposites, the search for a higher solution outside of the terms of the battle, that whenever there are two options that are bad, you look for the third option. <clears throat> and the problem is that neither Israel nor Hamas will flinch. There are efforts being made by Russia, by China, calls for negotiations at, at the United Nations. But the supplying of more weapons and the sending of a battle group uh, around the USS Gerald Ford into the region only increases the tension and the danger of the Es a potential escalation. There's no solution in that. Do you want to have a solution that benefits both sides, benefits everyone, or do you want to cheer for one team to win? And that's where the search for a higher solution to get outside of the existing axioms, who's right, who's justified. At this point, the, the, arguing that one side has a higher justification than the other means the killing will continue. And diplomacy is the, the only way to address it. Now, what's missing here is the other part of this, which is what's not being reported because of the war. And I want to give you, if, especially if you live in North America, you're not getting the picture of the ongoing financial breakdown, which is what we have argued has been behind all of these wars and tensions which is that as long as you have an imperial unipolar order, which insists on the right of a corporate oligarchy to extract loot from subject populations, whether they're the former colonial countries, or as is now the case, the people of Europe and the United States that are being looted to cover the bad economic decisions and policies of the corporate oligarchy of the last 30 years, that that's what should be addressed, and it's not being addressed. And unfortunately, in the Congress, you have a bunch of fools who are either monetarists or neoliberals who think the, the question is a matter of money, of spending less, of uh, dividing or d dividing what's there, a zero-sum game. Just as the, the situation in the Middle East becomes a zero-sum game, my gain, your loss. How do I maximize my gain and your loss? Well, that's not how human beings should function. So let me give you a picture from European press of what's happening and why it is that we, we need to step back 
and recognize that peace depends on mutually beneficial economic development, which really is the only solution to otherwise a spiraling upwards of danger from war. Now, just listen to these headlines from the last weekend. Uh, start with the Telegraph, the Daily Telegraph. Why Britain is on the verge of a cataclysmic financial crisis. Then there's the Financial Times, the same day. Mincing machine of the bond markets has spread the pain wide. Then you have from The Economist, the uh, rag of the City of London. Rising bond yields are exposing fiscal fantasy in Europe. And then from the Financial Times, also you have rising debt burden raises fears of financial health of American households. Now, those four articles define an element of the financial crisis that you're not hearing in, in the United States press, which is arguing about uh, whether Bidenomics is working, whether you should even call it Bidenomics, or if the solution is budget cutting, cutting down the size of government. All of these are non-solutions. And we've been presenting the actual solutions, which is a credit policy not to bail out bankrupt financial institutions and corporations, corporate cartels, but a credit policy that goes to the physical economic production. But you get a sense of it when you hear a little bit more from these articles. The uh, problem that is now beginning to dawn on people is that predatory hedge funds have taken over the $25 trillion U.S. Treasury market. And this is what's causing a panic. So in the Financial Times, the, the article uh, starts by saying, the message is finally sinking in that rates are staying high and central banks do not intend to reverse course. As a result, global bond markets are going through a what they call a mincing machine, inflicting pain on everyone from retail investors, that is, those of you who have uh, your small investments, to insurance companies. And what she goes on, to, the author goes on to say, is that we're at the foothills of a catastrophic reckoning with the fiscal incontinence and addiction to low rates that had taken hold over the previous few decades. That is, after 2008, bail out the financial corporations, but uh, keep funds away from the uh, physical economy. Now, it, it goes on to describe what's happening with the, the bond markets. And she writes, if Tuesday, that is last Tuesday, was market chaos, Wednesday was chaos on a trampoline on drugs. And they quote someone from Rabobank, uh, an, an investment consultant, who described the, the situation that you're turning the bond market into making it look like uh, the uh, trading like a penny stock, that is bonds. And he goes on to say, the combination of nauseating volatility, sinking bond valuations, and sky-high benchmark borrowing costs is stirring concerns over corporate defaults and shaky sectors such as the U.S. regional banks and commercial real estate. Now, we've been telling you for a long time that the problem is not just government debt, but corporate debt. The zombie corporation that's not making enough profits to cover the interest on its debt that's forced to borrow to keep uh, appearing to be liquid. So the Economist article goes on to talk about how it's not just in the United States. It's, it's the American bond market, but the Bank of Japan is taking actions in this way. German bonds have, have crossed uh, a, a red line, the Italian debt. Uh, investors fear markets are in for a turbulent time. Now, let me go to one of the questions, the, the question of the personal finance, because many people in North America are experiencing a problem of not being able to cover the costs even before the inflation. And the costs of borrowing have gone way up if you have to use credit cards. So there was an article in the Washington Post that talked about why there was a strike of the United Auto Workers. Aren't auto workers generally considered well paid? And the, the article had a graph which showed that auto workers pay since 2003 
has dropped further than that of any of the other 166 industries tracked by the U.S. Census Bureau. Now listen to this. This is something that you wouldn't expect. Adjusted for inflation, workers hired since uh, 2009 make only 60 percent uh, the second tier workers make only 60% of the first tier workers. But first tier workers, that is real wages, are 30% lower today in the auto industry than in 2003. And what does that mean? Well, the auto sector used to be the, the uh, sector that set the standards. That's why the United Auto Workers was out, were out on strike. And the U.S. Department of Labor is now identifying auto systems workers as low wage workers. So wages are collapsing, savings are disappearing. And the, at the same time, you have the fiscal budget hawks calling for cutting aid that would help people who are unable to cover their costs. And so we're seeing people lose their homes again, lose their cars lose their ability to cover medical bills and, and uh, tuition for college. What we're seeing overall is a systemic meltdown of the economy because of the bad policies of the last 30 years. Now, given that that's the actual picture economically, why do you think the media wants you so focused on choosing a side in the Middle East war that's going on? Because war is always used to distract people from the crisis they face. Now, these wars have another purpose, which is to beef up the arms industry and the corporate cartels that are related to that. And there's another purpose, as we've often pointed out, that the war in Ukraine against Russia is to knock out Russia as a potential factor in any kind of diplomacy to move away from a unipolar world to a world of multilateral agreements. So when you look at this situation, don't be tugged into choosing teams. There aren't teams, there are human beings on both sides who are suffering because of the horrible policies imposed on governments by the corporate cartels, the bankers, the, the big pharma and others who are out to suck every last drop of blood they can from populations. That's the reality of the imperial neo-colonial system. It's a reality that must stop. But it's only going to stop when people stop allowing themselves to be manipulated and actually start thinking on a higher level. And that's what we're trying to do, to get people to think on a higher level. So let me leave it at that. Tomorrow I'll talk about what we're going to be doing with this uh, upcoming International Peace Coalition meeting on Friday, which will give you a chance to participate in an international movement to shift away from this choosing sides in wars to actually moving toward a new security and development architecture.